So today we're going to be looking at the 2015 Coralite Snakebite version 1. Just like Puma version 1, Snakebite is one of the first two female characters in the core toy line. And just like Puma, she also has ball jointed legs. And like I said before, later on this year we're going to be getting some new figures and they will also be having some ball jointed legs. So that's pretty cool. So enough about that, let's take a look at Snakebite version 1. This is the 2015 Core Elite Snakebite version 1 and she is one of the first two female characters in the core toy line. The other would be Puma. Snakebite and Puma both have variant versions. The first variants have a higher neckline painted on their top, while the second variants have a much lower neckline exposing their cleavage. The two figures with the lower neckline came out first, then they added paint. And after that, they sculpted over the chest. As you probably already know, Snakebite and Puma are among the most popular figures in the entire core toy line. And how could they not be, with ball joints and great character design? Let's take a look at Snakebite's accessories. She comes with a crossbow, and it's the same one that we saw with Puma. It has a bolt, and it has a couple of holes on it. And as I said before, I think that's to make it much lighter. It also has these hinges here, so you can tell that this crossbow is supposed to be folded. As for the handle, once again, it's just plain. She also comes with two throwing knives. The throwing knives come with holes, and that's because Snakebite comes with a feature called wearable weapons. As you can see, the knives also have a little bit of grip. Last but not least, she comes with this semi-automatic pistol. The pistol also has a silencer, and you can see all the nice detail that's on there. Looks like maybe there might be a flashlight attachment to it. Let's take a look at Snakebite's articulation. Snakebite has a ball joint at the neck so she can move her head from side to side and up and down, but just barely. Her arms can go out about that far and they can twist all the way around. She also has a bend at the elbow and she can swivel at the same spot. She can also swivel back and forth on the abdomen, but not too much. Her legs are on ball joints, so they can go out about that far. You can go straight up, go out that far up, and bend at the knee. You can also make her kick kind of sideways. Now we'll take a look at her features. Snakebite comes with red hair and it's shaved on one side. Another reviewer, his name is Strident, he actually calls it Exosquad haircut. And I totally agree with him. She has blue eyes and she's not really wearing any lipstick. Coming down, she does have some armor on her chest and it says the core. And she has a high neckline in this version. Here's the version with the low neckline, just for comparison. And this is the version with the painted in chest. Continuing on with her armor, it's on her shoulders, and she has some sleeves that are rolled up. She's also wearing gloves on both hands. Turning her around, there's kind of more armor there, kind of like a backpack type thing and two pegs for the knives and that's part of the wearable weapons feature. Below that is a peg hole and that peg hole is for the crossbow. She does have a belt going across the peg hole and as we come back around we see that she has three pouches up front and a small pistol kinda looks like a derringer. Now you do have to watch out for this when you are getting one of the figures. As you can see, the one on the left, when it was molded, it didn't come out all the way. Going down we do have a white belt with a belt buckle that has a design. It looks like it might be two D's. Come back around, the belt goes around her butt. It's kind of low on there, it's kind of weird. As we keep going down her legs, you see you see we have some padding here and a strap 
and the strap actually connects to her holster, which is another part of the wearable weapons feature. Her pants are camouflage. And as we go across again, we do seem to have more straps coming all the way around. That strap doesn't really have anything on the other side. Coming down her legs, we do have some knee pads and we have the straps that connect the knee pads to her leg. Going down her legs, looks like we have a little bit of texture here. Something that's popping out, I'm not sure, some kind of electronic. And she does have that on both legs. On her left leg, she actually does have another weapon here. Looks like it might be another throwing knife. And that's wrapped around her boot. which looks pretty futuristic to me. There's not a lot of detail on her boots, but we can tell that the mold for this body was made in 2015. As I said earlier, she does have a feature called wearable weapons. And as you can see, she can actually hold her pistol in her holster, and the knives are on her back. They do seem to be a little loose, and it looks like the peg holes are actually bigger than the pegs themselves. There's also a peg hole here, and that's so we can attach the crossbow. Just like Puma, the crossbow fits a little loose. So either the handle is a little too thin or the peg hole is too big. Now we're going to take a look at Snakebite's bio. We can look at her bio along with the other core action figures through their website. Codename Snakebite. Real name Nasha Raven. She is part of the Terror Team Specialized Land Assault Unit. Her primary skills, tactical knife combat, and capoeira black belt. She grew up in the Australian Outback, where she traveled the plains protecting endangered species. While with her father, she developed a wide range of skills including diverse fighting styles, knife skills, and powerful immunities to almost every venomous and poisonous animal or plant. By the age of 20, she joined the Australian Special Operations Command Unit. Snakebite surpassed everyone's expectations despite being the only woman in the unit. They say that with just two knives, she could take out an entire team of enemies without ever being detected. Her incredible abilities stem mostly from her capoeira and other martial arts training. The Corps quickly caught word of her hand-to-hand -hand combat skills and immunity to toxins. Needing someone who could fight on the front lines without risk of getting infected by the cursed AI virus, the Corps invited her to join their ranks. Now the Corps can advance on the curse with one of their strongest new allies, Snakebite. In the bio, I'm kind of confused. It says she knows Capoeira, but there is no such fighting style. But there is a town in South Sudan called Capoeira. Maybe she's familiar with it. If they meant the Brazilian fighting style, which would be a nod to Puma's background, it's spelled Capoeira. So this is either a misspelling or a made-up fighting style. She is also immune to every type of poisonous animal or plant. So Puma is pretty much out of a job when fighting against Snakebite. It also says that she joined the Australian Special Ops Command Unit. I wonder if they meant the RUSE, which stands for Rescue Overt Operation Squad an old unit of the Corps from the previous incarnation in 2005, but I highly doubt it. Snakebite is a pretty cool figure, but I think Puma gets more coolness points because of her involvement in another character's bio, and it's from a spin-off line. I must admit that among the first packages of the Corps that I bought, two of them included Puma and Snakebite. Even former Corps package designer and fellow Super Hammer Bro, Grizz Geek, bought two packs of figures that contain Puma and Snakebite. He left the other characters to be adopted into my collection. Also Super Hammer Bro, Dan Classic, recently began collecting the core action figures, and guess which figures were first on his radar. I hope you guys enjoyed this review of the other first female character in the core, Snakebite, and join us next time as we take a look at the 2015 Core Elite Reaper version 2.